KY3 and KSBR News starts now. This is not the end of our fight. I will always be a fighter for the people of Missouri. Missouri Governor Eric Reitens making the shocking announcement today that he is resigning. The announcement comes after months of investigations into the governor's personal and political life that led to criminal charges and a special session to consider his impeachment. I'm Ethan Forheads. I'm Lisa Rose. The governor's resignation will take effect this Friday, June 1st at 5 p.m. Lieutenant Governor Mike Parson of Bolivar will take over as Missouri's chief executive, Andrew Havranek, has been following this story since it broke. He has the latest from Jefferson City. Andrew? Lisa and Ethan, Governor Greitens has said for the past five months he would not resign from the governor's office, saying he did not do enough to warrant the two felonies that, were that he was charged with. He also maintained his innocence today during the announcement of his resignation and said that increasing legal costs and increased stress on his family led to his decision to resign. Today, I am announcing that I will resign as governor of Missouri effective Friday, June 1st at 5 p.m. That announcement came just after 4.30 Tuesday evening, five months after the news of an affair and allegations that Governor Greitens took a semi-nude photo of his former mistress without her consent broke the night of his State of the State address. The last few months have been incredibly difficult for me, for my family, for my team, for my friends, and for many, many people that I love. Greitens maintained his innocence and argued he has done nothing wrong, but said this was instead a political conspiracy. Traveling the state, I have talked to many of you who harbor extraordinary anger at this ordeal and for those who have pushed and promoted it. For those who would be moved to vengeance, let us allow history and God to bring justice. Crichton's announcement comes during the second week of a special session of the state legislature, which was for the sole purpose of letting a special House investigative committee finish its work gathering testimony and potentially recommend the impeachment of Governor Greitens. The committee has canceled its hearings that were scheduled through the rest of the week, but there has been no statement on what's next for the special session or for the information the committee has gathered so far. So for the moment, let us walk off the battlefield with our heads held high. We have a good and proud story to tell our children. Let's love them and each other every day. St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner released a statement after the governor's announcement saying that she and Greitens defense team had reached a quote fair and just resolution and that they would be releasing more information tomorrow. The Jackson County prosecutor who was appointed as the special prosecutor in the invasion of privacy case dropped by Kim Gardner just two weeks ago said her investigation continues and no deals have been made between her office and the governor's defense team. Uh, uh, in that case. Live tonight from the state capitol, I'm Andrew Havranek. Thanks, Andrew. Let's go over the timeline of the trouble Greitens has faced leading up to his resignation today. In January, Greitens admitted to having an affair with his hairdresser in 2015, a year before he was elected governor. She claimed he took a picture of her while she was partially nude and threatened to use it as blackmail to keep her from speaking of the affair. Greitens denies anything illegal, but was charged by the St. Louis prosecutor on February 22nd with felony invasion of privacy. No photo was ever found, and that charge was dropped suddenly two months later. On April 20th, Greitens was indicted on two felony charges of computer tampering, accused of stealing a list of donors from his veterans' charity to raise money for his run for governor. Then on May 22nd, law, lawmakers in Missouri gaveled into a special session to investigate those accusations against the governor, which could include hearings on whether to impeach Greitens and then remove him from office. And then today, Greitens announced his resignation just before 4.30. It will be effective Friday at 5 p.m. Politicians across the state are reacting to the news of Greitens' resignation. Missouri Republican Senator Roy Blunt said on Twitter tonight, 
The governor made the best decision for his family and the state, and he looks forward to Governor Parson's leadership and will do everything he can to be helpful. State Auditor Nicole Holloway also weighing in, saying in part that the corruption must be cleaned up and our state's reputation must be restored. As we've told you, when Governor Greitens resigns, Lieutenant Governor Mike Parson will take over leading the state. Parson, who lives on a farm in Polk County, is a former state senator, representative, and sheriff. Francis Watson continues our team coverage tonight with reaction from the soon-to-be governor and the people who know him best. Francis. Now, Ethan, as Governor Eric Greitens took the podium officially resigning from office, Lieutenant Governor Mike Parson was on his way to Jefferson City. We're told that he got the call about what was happening while he was working on his farm in Bolivar. Governor Greitens is still the governor of the state of Missouri, and I'm the lieutenant governor. We're going to function that way until Friday as, as the time comes. It was a bit of a chaotic afternoon for Lieutenant Governor Mike Parson and his team. He's going to be in all the rest of the week and the weekend and his staff, and we're going to sure try to come up with a game plan uh, where we don't make any mistakes. Right now, we're still trying to kind of just uh, grasp everything like everybody else is. About 100 miles south, back in Parson's hometown of Bolivar, a similar reaction. Well, it's been uh, quite an afternoon. Everybody's proud of him because he's came a long way. Steve Garrison was Parson's next door neighbor. He, like many others in town, say they had a feeling the former Polk County Sheriff would lead the state. Here lately, it seemed like it was going to be possible, but I never thought it would uh, turn up this quick. Garrison says he hopes everything in Jefferson City will settle down now. Outside of uh, uh, Mr. Greitens' other problems, you know, I thought he did all right, but you know, I'm sure Mike will step in and take over and won't be, a, won't be an issue. I'm sure he can take care of everything without a problem. He and many others in the Bolivar community say they're proud to have one of their own leading Missouri. We've supported him all the way through, so it's a better person. I feel good right now. I feel good, and we're going to be fine uh, in the future, and we're going to move Missouri forward. Now, there was uh, some consideration that lawmakers had uh, tried to decide on whether or not they should allow legislation to allow the governor to appoint someone to fill that vacancy, but it wasn't passed. Parson could appoint someone, but if it gets challenged in court, legal sources say it might not be, it might not stand. Lisa, Ethan. All right, a lot to watch from here. Thanks, Francis. Other news tonight, a big loss for people in one northwest Arkansas community. Right there you see it. The Newton County Sheriff's Office is investigating a suspicious fire that burned down the post office. Caitlin Sinet has more on the investigation and how it's directly impacting people there. This is all that's left of the Compton post office in Newton County. It was just a heart sickening thing to think that we may not have a post office. Firefighters got the call around four in the morning Sunday and are still trying to find out what started the flames and if it was set on purpose. Looks like it's going to be uh, suspicious to us at this time. We're going to bring a sniff dog in to see where we're at, if there's any accelerants or anything that was applicable in this process. The Newton County Sheriff estimates a couple dozen people used this post office, including the Compton Fire Department. I personally lost my paycheck in this one. Some has lost their mail and some certificates as being mailed to them and some paychecks that was being mailed. Wow. So it's uh, really got the, the community in a little bit of a disarray right now. Now people in Compton will have to go to Harrison to get their mail. A 17-mile drive. To go to Harrison is 30 minutes. You know, that's going to be out of our way. And then a lot of other people, I'm sure they're coming and, you know, expecting to be able to just get their mail right out of the P.O. box and go on their way. So I'm sure it's a large inconvenience for many people around here. People who live in the area say they hope a new post office will be built in Compton. Last year, the post office in Parthenon was destroyed by a tornado. They did not replace it, so I don't know if they're going to replace this one or move it to a different facility. In Compton, I'm Caitlin Sinet. People living there who use the post office will have to show photo ID at the Harrison Post Office to get their mail. The arson dog is scheduled to be on scene Thursday. A Dade County deputy shot and killed a man outside of Everton over the weekend. The sheriff says the deputy was checking on a person who had been threatening suicide Sunday afternoon. He shot the man, though, when that man confronted him with a knife. The name of the man killed not being released yet. The deputy is on leave during the investigation. Now to weather, and some of us could see a few storms overnight. Chief Meteorologist Ron Hurst joins us from the Storm Team Center. Ron? 
Yeah, guys, we've been watching some uh, thunderstorms out across Kansas pretty closely. You can see a number of uh, there's thunderstorm watch out there. There's a number of warnings, too, as these storms are pretty big. Notice they're marching on to the east and will eventually make it into uh, western Missouri. One other thing to point out, this is what's left of Alberta. It's coming up through uh, Tennessee, going to move into western Kentucky, pretty close to Paducah, and then move up into uh, southern Illinois and eventually into Indiana. So that thing will stay uh, to our east. Uh, let's get a check of the uh, high temperatures today. I do this because Springfield set yet another record high temperature today. We hit 91. Uh, the old record was 90 set back in night or in uh, 2012, so just six years ago. Uh, but this is the third record high temperature we've had in a row over the course of the last couple of days. It looks like our string, though, is going to come to an end tomorrow. Uh, let's get a look at what to expect for the rest of the night. We have clear skies out there right now. Uh, temperatures in the 70s will eventually drop into the upper 60s as we get some cloud cover and possibly some rain from that complex of storms over in Kansas. All right, I'll tell you what to expect in the next couple of days when I come back. All right, still to come, traffic headaches could be on the way for drivers in Springfield. The repairs that will have you wanting to take yet another route. Plus, you've likely seen them, new apartments popping up all over town. The reason for the big boom in construction next. Number one in the Ozarks. You're watching KY3 News at 10 with Lisa Rose, Ethan Forehands, Storm Team Meteorologist Ron Hurst, and Sports with Chad Klein. The place to be on air, online, on the go. Have you noticed there's a construction boom going on all across the Springfield area? New apartments are going up everywhere and they're being claimed as fast as they are open. That demand's so high, buildings are already pre-leased before they're finished. So if you're looking to rent, apartment managers say you should act quickly. We are currently building 180 new units. The demand is there and the multifamily industry is rising to meet that demand. Just getting the application in, like I looked at one in a different um, apartment complex and within like a day or two, they had already taken it up. They only had one apartment left. Be ready to wait. Some people are being told they'll have to wait at least a few weeks for an apartment to even become available. Traffic alert for you now and potential big backups for drivers in North Springfield. The State Highway Department is closing the inside northbound and southbound lanes of Glenstone and Evergreen to replace decades old pavement. That area is near the Holiday Inn between Kearney and Interstate 44. Uh, MoDOT says that while the closure will be bothersome for some drivers, the work there is needed. It's just one of those things that over time things wear out. This is a 1950s era concrete pavement it's uh, it's old it's de deteriorating there's getting a lot of potholes out there so it's one of those things that just it is time to get it replaced before it gets any worse all right the project is scheduled to be wrapped up by the 4th of july we are tracking some storms to the west of springfield right now headed this direction ron's back with a timeline when temperatures could reach into the mid 90s your ky3 storm team forecast Hey, good evening, folks. Yeah, still May, but man, it feels like we're right in the middle of summer, doesn't it? I mean, look at these temperatures out there. We're still all in the 70s tonight, although just barely so over in uh, Salem at uh, 70. West Plains, you're down three degrees in the last hour. Currently sitting at 71. Uh, but Mountain Home, 75. Harrison is at 76. We are 77 uh, here in town. And look at all Monette and Rogers, still just one degree shy of 80 right now. Out in Republic, it is uh, pretty quiet out there in western Greene County. It is clear over overhead humidity at 64 percent winds currently out of the east at seven miles an hour dew point temperature is 64 probably won't get quite that cool in the morning our allergy count today shot up uh, back to 125 that's up over friday mold continues to be a huge problem if you're a mold sufferer well whether this weather has not been kind to you lately at all uh, that count today at about 50,500, and that's mold spores per cubic meter of air, which isn't very much air. So that is a lot of mold in the air, folks. Uh, grass coming in at high levels, too. All right, uh, checking out the uh, radar satellite composite again. This is what's left of Alberta. The good news for us is that is staying out to our east, going to go through Kentucky, southern Illinois, and then into Indiana, bypassing us. We're watching this group of thunderstorms out to the west. Notice it is a broken line of thunderstorms. There have been quite a few warnings uh, with that for hail and some very high winds. Notice how that continues to march uh, towards the Ozarks. Let's get a look at uh, high resolution 
Resolution Futurecast. It says we're going to be quiet around here for a few hours. Uh, once we get to about uh, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, we start to see that activity enter western Missouri. Notice how it uh, remains kind of broken. And then as it starts to head towards Highway 65, poof just like a magic act. It just disappears off the radar. So we may never really get much rain here in Springfield. Uh, our eastern county certainly won't get any rain. And then notice uh, by 10 o'clock in the morning, we're forecasting that sky to begin clearing, and that's going to allow those temperatures to go right up. So looking at the readings in the morning, we're talking about starting off in the middle to upper 60s across the Ozarks. That's still way above average. So by lunchtime with that sunshine, we're going to move into the mid 80s, maybe slightly cooler towards Rolla. But it looks like most of us will have a chance to again be in the upper 80s and low 90s in the afternoon. Of course, the feels like temperature, the humidity is going to be somewhere around 93 or 94. Now, it's only going to get worse on Friday. By Friday, I think we're going to be back in record territory, which is mid 90s, as this little ridge of high pressure sets up. Uh, the good news is it's only going to be about one day's worth of heat because by the end of the weekend, we get some cooler weather in the Ozarks, and that is going to feel refreshing. So, our forecast then for tonight will keep in this chance of rain, but again, it's for those far western counties. Our overnight temperatures, middle to upper 60s with a southeasterly wind. And then tomorrow, we'll get some filtered sunshine, so when the temperature gets up to around 90, we may see some scattered thunderstorms develop depending on where that outflow boundary from that dying complex eventually lines up. Right now, I'm thinking maybe our eastern counties, but we'll have to see what happens there. Right, here's our forecast for the next seven days. Thursday, a pretty good chance of rain, mainly in the morning, high temperature of 86. By Friday, I think we're pushing mid-90s. If we get there, we could have some thunderstorms. Cold front comes through Saturday and leads to some delightful weather on Sunday and Monday. Guys? Wow. Oh, that'd be a good day to be outside in 82 degree weather, huh? Still to come, a Marine from the Ozarks springs into action to save two children. And it's all caught on camera. I forced myself down. I got sand under my feet, pushed myself up, just grabbed him. What he saw that made him take action. Makes you proud. A Marine from the Ozarks reacted immediately, saving two kids from drowning on a Hawaii beach. Yeah. Caleb Franklin and his family, originally from Lebanon, thought the two young children were just playing in the water. Then he heard them screaming for help, bobbing up and down in the water. So without thinking twice, he took off to save them. There you go. Look at the picture. The children were about 30 feet from shore, but Caleb, as you see, was able to get to both children and bring them to shore their faces. I don't think I'm ever going to forget that sight. It's just, I don't know, terror maybe. They were just petrified of just crying and screaming. And wow. We were told the kids swallowed a lot of water, but they are okay. And Caleb says what everybody, every hero says. <laughs> he was just in the right place at the right time. Oh, but to those parents are thanking the Lord he was. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah. Good on you. A two-time All-Star coming to town when you can catch Carlos Martinez on the mound at Hammonds Field. Plus, a trio of area teams in St. Louis ready to bring their schools some new hardware. Can they do it? Highlights next. Sports with Chad Plum starts now. Good evening, everybody. It is the final week of the high school sports season, and this is a moment teams have been working on since the frigid month of February. Taylor Kaufman from O'Fallon tonight, where Mansfield was looking to repeat some history. Hey, Chad. Well, prior to winning the state championship last year, the last time Mansfield won was when they went back to back in 95 and 96. It could become a pattern, but first they'd have to get through Valley Catholic. Mansfield throwing their ace Spencer Green. He struck out four batters through four and two thirds innings. He's got a lot of toughness, and that's the thing about Spencer or any senior that's played for four years. As for the other seniors, they got things going in this one. Jordan Evans brought in Christian Buchanan to put the Lions up 1-0 in the first. And in the second, tied at one, James Lansdowne smacks one up the middle for the RBI double to put Mansfield back on top. It's tied up again at three, but the Lions ran into some trouble in the fifth inning. After Green sat down the first two batters, Valley put up seven consecutive hits between Green and Evans, racking up a six-run inning to lead Mansfield 9-3. to three. You know, I've got to tip my cap to Valley Catholic. Good ball club. Um, they showed a different level of play than, they, than we witnessed last night in their game. And Mansfield wasn't able to come back from that, finishing as the state runner-up 12-5. As uh, we've said many times here, we're hungry for more. Hungry for more. So, from O'Fallon, I'm Taylor Kaufman. Back to you.
All right, Taylor, thank you so much. This morning, the Skyline Tigers settling for fourth place with a 6-4 loss to Russellville. This was Skyline's first trip to state. Congratulations on the great season. And then it was a beautiful night for the Class 3 state semifinals. Stratford up against Hallsville. Tony Caldwell on the mound for the Indians, allowing only one hit through six. Stratford scoring first in this one. Dylan Turner swinging for the fences. Going to bring in two runs on the triple to deep right center field. The Indians will be right back at it in the fifth. This time with the inside the park home run from Dylan Hester. This will put Stratford up 3-0 as the Indians are headed to the Class 2 state championship tomorrow afternoon. Look at the play at the plate as they top Hallsville 6-0 to face Mulder. Have fun, you know, we've talked about it. We, 2009, uh, I was there, and, and I don't know that I enjoyed it enough. And so, oh! Yeah! <laughs> 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 yeah. That's awesome. How's that feel? <laughs> feels great. That feels great. Hopefully, Taylor has a spare camera with her in St. Louis. Two-time All-Star Carlos Martinez making a brief rehab appearance for the Springfield Cardinals on Thursday. The Tsunami has an ERA of 1.62 this season. First pitch on Thursday is set for 7-10. This evening, the Springbirds run into the Corpus Christi Hooks in the fourth. Chris Chinea, who's hitting almost 100 points better at home. The two-run homer tying the game at four. Springfield looking for its fifth straight win, but the Astros' double-A affiliate takes it to the Cardinals pitching staff. The Hooks put up a total of 13 hits, scoring 11 runs, take the series opener from the Springbirds 11-4. Parent Cardinals bouncing back after their Memorial Day loss to Milwaukee. Michael Walker, a gem on the mound, getting plenty of run support. Francisco Pena with the home run to straightaway center field, one of three hits. That was maybe the longest home run a Cardinals ever hit at Miller Park. Redbirds top the first place Brewers 6-1 as Jordan Hicks working the final two innings, striking out four. Royals hosting the Twins. Miguel Sano was the hero last night for Minnesota. This evening, extending his personal 16-game hit streak against Kansas City with the RBI single to left. Plays the game's first run, but Alex Gordon throwing out the trail runner, and that's big because Jorge Soler just drew a bases-loaded walk. We are tied right now at one in the ninth. Also, Waynesville grad Juwan Morgan announcing he is returning to Indiana instead of taking part in that NBA draft. Morgan started 30 games this past year for the Hoosiers, averaged 16 and a half points per game. No. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> well, we're following some breaking news now out of Phelps County, an investigation currently underway after a house exploded on Highway U, which is near St. James. No word yet on what caused the explosion, no word of any injuries. We'll certainly be following that. You can check online, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Have a good night.